Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're talking about game file I.O. or input output as it pertains to your SSD or hard drive or your other storage device. So when I say game file I.O., what I mean is what type of files in terms of size our games are loading, how big those files are, how many they're loading, and what that means in terms of the performance you should be looking for in your drive or whether that's an SSD or a hard drive, and what it means in terms of how optimization is for modern games. So just a bit of background, I did a full test on this. It was mostly an experiment for internal testing so I could build a test methodology for SSDs, but I wanted to publish it because I think it's really cool information. You can't do necessarily a whole lot with this. It's sort of just cool to know, but it will inform you how to select a drive in the future. So let's, let's look at the methodology here. I use this program called HDTune Pro, and it is currently logging the uh, the active file transfers going on on my system. And there are actually a lot of them. You can see this is the activity graph here, and this is the block size, or the actual size of the files being moved around from and to the disk and reads and writes. And what it's doing right now is mostly measuring transactions with Windows. That's gonna be log files, caching, temporary files, because I'm not actually actively doing anything with this computer, but it's got browsers open, those might be caching things, there might be temporary files, Windows itself creates and stores a log file for error checking, and it's got all kinds of event managers, so there's constantly data being written to and read from your device, and this is important to know because with an SSD, you have a lifespan, and yes, it is very long in general. Uh, it's measured in program erase cycles, or PE cycles, and generally it's something like 3000 for an MLC SSD. If you don't know what that means, check the link in the description below. But over time, you're gonna be writing a lot of data to it, especially if you leave your computer on all the time. This probably won't impact the vast majority of you. Your system's usable life will be depleted long before your drive is depleted. So don't panic and start turning your system off all the time just for that reason. Turn it off maybe for other reasons like power consumption. But just good stuff to know. So constantly Windows is doing things in the background, whether or not you want it to, which is the nature of Windows, is it not? I use this tool to measure games. So I would launch, I launched five games. I launched Watch Dogs, Titanfall, Battlefield 4, Grid Autosport, and Metro Last Light, which is a very popular benchmarking tool for GPUs and other hardware. Using these games, I tested, and using HDTune, I tested how long they take to launch and what types of files they're loading during launch, or rather, what size of files, not what type, but what size files they load during launch and what size files they run read and write during gameplay. And we will call reading and writing collectively IO transactions or accessing pretty plainly. And looking at all of this with the tool running, I can see that as an example here, uh, just in the background right now, we've got a heavy amount of 4K read going on. We've got a heavy amount. This is less than 64K. The big bar means everything less than 64K. We have very little greater than 64K and we have a lot in the 8K to 32K range. That's just Windows. Now looking at a game, I actually ran these benchmarks. They're, they're pretty extensive. And you can see this is the gameplay when you're actually playing a game reads. So every read that your SSD is doing, meaning every file for Titanfall or whatever, it's, it's calling for that file programmatically. It grabs it, it reads it, it tells the CPU or the RAM or whatever, whatever it wants to know. Maybe it sends it over to the GPU if it's a texture file. And then that's considered a read. And reads are measured generally from 0.5K or 512 bytes uh, up to 1K, 2K, 4K, that's kilobytes by the way. Uh, 8K, 16K, 32K, 64, and greater than 64. And what I have here is a percentage breakdown because uh, looking at the file by file breakdown, it's it's a very it's a skewed chart, but you can see a very big table of how many files in my full article below. So what we see here, uh, the big one, just to address the one jumping out at everyone, that big yellow line is Metro Last Light. So that is Metro, and this is specifically the 32k file reads that Metro does. Metro actually reads more than 10,000 files for its benchmark test. Uh, when you run it three times in a row at least. So m maybe it's more like 3,000 per test. But that was 10,000 for six minutes of gameplay with Metro. And uh, it reads a bit less when you're doing loading, when you load the software, but it's, it's still a lot. So 
32K is very popular. Now what I want to address here, the reason you care about these numbers is because in SSD reviews you will see two things. You will see sequential read and write, and you will see random read and write. Random is almost always, every name a website, it is almost always measured in 4K random. And what that means is that it's simulating a real world environment. Basically, the, the tests, the reviewers, the testers, and the SSD companies and, and hard drive companies back in the old days all got together and sort of independently tested it. They said, okay, it looks like 4K is the most common file size in a Windows or application environment, so we will use 4K random for testing drives. Random is important because uh, that is the type of data it's moving around. We don't necessarily know what it wants or when it wants it, just at some point, Windows or the game will want a 4K file. So that is why 4K is always tested in SSD reviews. My purpose here was to see is that still true? Does it matter for you if you're a gamer? As you can see, 32K is very popular now, as is 16K. And part of that is the games industry changing. Part of that is just because games are different and normally lesser optimized than a lot of other software, especially Windows. Because if we switch back here to HD2 Pro, which is running in Windows, you can still see it's almost all 4K. It's been running now for eight and a half minutes, almost all 4K uh, reads with some writes and a lot of 16K writes. So, what we learned from this chart is that games like 32K, 16K, they still like 4K, just not quite as much as you might expect. And what that means is you shouldn't read too far into the 4K random tests, and perhaps look at sites like ours, which in the future will be running these more uh, real-world gaming, synthetic gaming tests, where we look at the 32K and 16K performance of SSDs, not just 4K. Now, scrolling down, or on in the video, just switching the slide, we can see write performance. This is a lot different. It's a lot more normalized. In writes, it's still very populated in 4K files. Part of that is because it's just a very efficient file size from a game developer or application designer perspective. You can fit a lot into 4K, especially depending on your compression. And uh, it, it's good for hard drives, which is what a lot of stuff was originally built for and still built for, um, just based on hard drive transaction speeds and uh, allocation size. So. We have a lot that's still greater than 64K. My guess is that these files are probably your save game files. So the Watchdog save game file is pretty big. And it might also be for other things like log files. If they save any kind of recording of the match in the background, that's what that would be. So uh, generally, this is a very unpopular size for reads, unless you're playing a movie. Writes, uh, it's, it seems to be more common in games and perhaps for those reasons I listed. So those are the popular sizes there. Let's look at the actual uh, amount of files. We'll skip over to that. And you can see all this in my article below. Now the amount of files for the uh, reads and writes I just talked about in your game, meaning while gaming, including your level loads and your cell transitions, what we're doing is uh, reading, let's see, the most we read is Metro Last Light at 10,294 files that are smaller than 64K. This does not count greater than that size. It's writing 1,100 files. That's a lot of files to move around during your gameplay. So in Metro Last Light, you're actually much more likely to have a storage bottleneck than in other games for this reason. Um, as for whether you'll see that, that's tough to say because a lot of those files are going to be during the level load, which I said is included in this. So you're, you're calling a lot of those before you actually see it on the screen. What that means is that with a solid state drive, and we all know this already, it's going to load the level faster because it simply can move like 10 times faster, if not more, right? So uh, a quick dis disclaimer, any solid state drive, doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a reasonable solid state drive and not a hard drive, you're almost definitely not going to notice a speed difference between SSDs. If you plug in a 3K HyperX SSD and then you plug in some really high-end Samsung drive, like an 840 Pro, I would put money down that 99% of users will not be able to tell the difference in loading a level in a game. They'll be able to tell differences in encryption time and in Adobe Premiere and code time and things like that. Gaming, not so much. So don't take this too crazy, right? It's just, it's really just a cool information thing. Like I said, don't uh, base too many decisions off of it because ultimately you're not gonna be able to see the difference. It's useful though for applications if you're using professional stuff. Looking at other games, uh, Metro is an outlier. Titanfall I found very interesting. Titanfall only reads eight files when you're playing the game. So it loads it all, 
that's it. That's all it wants for one level is eight files. It writes to 352. It's writing almost 300 megabytes, and it's reading to 156 kilobytes. And those that's a lot of writes. So you might be wondering, why doesn't my drive balloon when I'm playing games? And that's because these are mostly cache and temporary files. So it's dumping it all as soon as it no longer needs the data, which may be at the end of the level, or it may be at the end of the session, if it's some kind of anti-cheat thing or logging. Uh, stuff like that. Some of it will be permanent, like kilobytes on your save file, but that's not. That's about it. Uh, Watchdog 725 read 555 write. Not too exciting there for the rest of it. And then now we can look at the load time or the the load file sizes and the distribution there. This is the file size and count of files during loading a game. So this is different from playing. It's the initial startup, and that's useful for if you're trying to figure out how long it will take you to load that application or game in this instance. 32K is extremely popular in loading and that's probably just a package thing. Uh, I'm not a game developer. If you're a game developer, I would love it if you could email us, hit the contact form and, and we can talk about how you guys build packages for games for easier distribution and optimization. But 32K is very popular here. 16K very popular, 4K very popular. Then after that it's eight and everything else. So 4K is still a front runner. Uh, but you can see 32k is pretty big here, and that's probably things like maybe your movies or, or your promotional videos for NVIDIA or Intel or AMD, that type of thing at the beginning of it. Those would be bigger files. In terms of the writes, 4k is very popular. It's actually more than 60% for 3 out of our 5 and more than 50% for 4 out of our 5. So uh, 4k writes very important for loading a game for some reason. Why that is, I would have to guess it's probably log files uh, in case your game crashes during loading, or it's probably maybe Steam is doing something if it's a Steam operated game, things like that. Windows is probably writing things too because those will be in here uh, as background noise because it's probably logging your events as an admin. So 4K is very popular, then 16 after that. So what do we learn from this data? Well, you, the cool stuff in my opinion, is just how many files games are loading. It is mind-blowing to think that while you're playing Metro, it is transacting 11,000 files, reads and writes. That is a lot of files. That's a lot of textures, a lot of objects in the game, a lot of models, and then of course you've got all your, if there's any events, it has to grab that event data from the drive. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on, animations as well, rigging, and uh, and that's just cool to me. It, it doesn't necessarily make your drive faster to know that, but it's cool. And that's part of the fun of doing hardware and gaming work. And you can apply this knowledge, not necessarily the games, because here's why. You're, like I said, if you buy a $300 SSD versus a $100 SSD, it is going to run CSGO or Watch Dogs effectively identically. It's going to be the same loading time. It's going to play just as seamlessly or not seamlessly. And those seamlessness <laughs> uh, actions will be a result of the game's optimization more than your drive on an SSD. Now in a game like Skyrim, you might notice a little stutter. If you're playing on it, go play Skyrim on a hard drive. And especially if you load it with like 4K texture packs and mods, if you zone, in Skyrim you zone by cells. There's no loading screen, uh, except in some areas, but work with me here. So if you load a new cell, you're dumping data for the old one that you're not going to be in anymore, and you're loading, fetching data for the new one. And this can create a stutter because of your storage bottleneck. All PCs are bottlenecked on storage at this point. With an SSD, that's going to vanish for the most part, and it doesn't matter what SSD you use. So this data isn't going to make your drive faster. But when you're selecting a drive, what it can do is help you understand from an application level, if you're doing things with Photoshop, or with Premiere, or with encryption. This is very useful information, and you'll see I'm, I'm going to benchmark all of those things just like I did games, and you'll be able to research your drives and see, okay, this is gonna be the fastest at encrypting huge amounts of data. This is gonna be the fastest at encoding H.264 files from Adobe Premiere. And that's, inc that's important stuff to know. This stuff is just cool, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. So if you're really curious about how SSDs work, please subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description below. Check out the newest article I just wrote. It kind of gets you started on this stuff. And again, as always, let me know in the comments if you have a question. I will more likely see comments on the website than YouTube these days, 
But do let me know what you think if you have questions, and I will do my best to get to you. So uh, subscribe as always, and thanks for your time, and I will see you all next time. Peace.